Minutes of Hell podcast brought to you by Field the 68 <laughs> Network. Coach, Nolan Richardson joining me once again. Coach, you were there for me year one. Now it's year two with the podcast. You're looking good. You're looking fresh. How are you feeling? I feel pretty good, Pat. Anytime I get an opportunity to see you, it makes me even feel better. So <laughs> because of you, I'm feeling a lot better. Coach, you recognize this shooting shirt from 1998? I mean, come on now. This is the real deal. Well, you must have you stole it? <laughs> yes, I stole it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I used to, we used to pick those, you know, we used to pick them up and give them back <laughs> out the next year. So you, you got yours, so that means you stole it. <laughs> well, I was smart, though. I took someone else's number so that mine was accounted for. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is great, man. That's, it looks good on you. That yeah. Means you, haven't, you haven't gained a whole lot of weight, and uh, you're still shooting the ball like you used to. With the, your, your wrist is uncocking at the right time. So That's right. <laughs> well, I tell everybody, Coach, it's, it's like upper body, I can still do it. And shooting, like I'm a better shooter now, hand-eye quarter, because I've been doing it for 40 years almost, right? Just shooting, right. just shooting. It, as opposed to when I was 20, you know, I probably first shot maybe when I was 12 years old. So now I've got decades more of the muscle memory, and uh, which I don't understand why it doesn't happen in golf, Coach. You see what I mean? It just seems the older I get, the worse I get. <laughs> That's the deal in golf is muscle memory. That's the same yep. thing that you've done in basketball. You know, the shooting the jump shot over and over and over. And after a while, it's automatic. You know, <laughs> you don't think about it. You don't say, hey, my elbow straight and my arm's right and my this. All those kind of things should have passed you by since you were eight, nine, ten years old. You don't, yes. you, don't re you don't recruit guys and teach them to shoot. You recruit guys that can shoot so they can make some baskets so you can win. <laughs> right, exactly. That's a and I, I do want to get into your coaching, uh, your recruiting philosophies. Let me start out by: uh, Have you been able to to golf uh, not, a not, little bit? Not much, not much at all, uh, Patrick. I have not. My wife uh, Rose has been pretty sick most of, most of the last two or three years, and so I I've cut way way back. I kind of mm -hmm. caretaking mostly, and once in a while I'll I'll sneak out and and, and play nine holes. I, Hardly ever get to play 18 holes when I do go out and play. Yeah, that, I know it, it's it's tough. And obviously thinking of Rose and she's oh, we're always uh, praying for her and, and uh, hope. And I know that you're right there by her side. So we appreciate that. She's always asking, talking about you. And when yeah. you get to your, your times on television, she's glued to it to, to make sure that that I see Pat. Yeah, I'll, I'll give her I'll give her a shout out. I always re. Uh, I always quote what you had told us. We all need a point guard in life. Right. That's right. So, so she could point out what we're doing wrong. <laughs> every damn thing you do wrong, you know? <laughs> so yeah, every, everybody's got it should have a point guard. I'm sure you got one yeah. that's pointing out things to you. So, oh, so daily when I hear the go. word point guard, it doesn't mean very much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> always had I, one. I, I, I turned it in. You and Kareem Reed for my wife, Janine. And, I mean, it's just, you know, it's all, all the same. I need somebody to keep giving me the ball, Coach. Yeah. Yeah, because you sure can put it up. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> how, much, uh, how much basketball are you able to watch these days? Are you able to, to get in front of the watch, TV? I, I probably watch more because of the COVID situation that they, they show games right. than I have ever watched before. You know, I, I try to keep up with the modern day. You know, they 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 still call it our our basketball old school. I never could figure that out because when I was 15 years old, it was old school. <laughs> <laughs> so pick and roll and, and all those kind of things and pick and pop up, they've been around for a hundred years. But uh, all of a sudden, people have made it sound like this is something new, something they've invented, and it's, it's yeah. something that's always been there. Coach, I'm glad you brought that up. Something else I learned from you is you always would stress, do not be a prisoner of the moment. And I think what you're talking about now, everybody is so focused on the now that they really lose sight of what was going on. When I was playing, I went back and looked, Coach. 
we shot the three point shot, okay, at a rate of about 38% every game. Now, if you compare that to today's teams, the number one team in the country shoots at about 40%, the three point shot. So we were, we were playing today's game 25 years ago. Okay. Yeah. And I think the difference is more teams are shooting. So back in our day, in my day, it was, it was maybe just a handful of teams that shot the three point shot 35, 40% of the time during a game. Now there's maybe close to a hundred teams that do it versus maybe 10, uh, 25 years ago. And I, my question would be to you is, were you aware of that? Was that a part of the strategy, the high rate of getting up three point shots? Well, you know, I, I was not a, a real happy person when they changed the, the deals to three point, the three point line. I, I was, I didn't, I, you know, I thought it was another gimmick of, of a game. Really? You know, we got three points now. And, <laughs> and, 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 and I remember that before we went to the three point game, we averaged 100 points a game at one point at Tulsa University. And there was no three point line. And then all of a sudden we got a three point line as time went by and we're shooting threes, but we're not averaging a hundred points a game. Right. Uh, so, so what has happened though, the three point to me brought the little guy back into the game for a long time. He was absent. It was the aircraft carriers. I call them the, the, <laughs> the guys that are seven feet and six, nine and six, 10 back in those days. That's what they did. Block shots dunk the basketball right, uh, right. And the little guy never went inside he couldn't he'd go off and then he'd get killed but when they put that line out it increases it increased the little guy back into the game it, it became not a big man's game anymore matter of mm. fact it's a little man's game it's a guy that can shoot game uh, if you and if you play a little defense and, and some of them play no defense with the three-point line they just play Right. And they play to get their shots up and that's it. And we, I used to have a saying that there's those who play to play and there's those who play to win. And so mm -hmm. sometimes you got a guy out there shooting 40, 50 threes. Well, you know, you don't, have, you don't have to be a genius to know if you make half of those, you got a chance to win, you got a chance. But if you right. guard somebody, you guard somebody, you got a whole lot better chance of winning. So I know that you're keeping up with the current Razorback basketball team that run to the Elite Eight last year. And what you said about them defending, that's something I felt like they hung their hat on being able to defend. And I hear from a lot of Razorback fans now, this year's team, because they're making six the three-pointers per game. And the number one team in the SEC is making like 10, all right? But they're shooting a lot of them. And I counter that with saying this Razorback team is going to play defense. You know what else they do, coach? They get to the, they make close to 20 free throws per game at 70%. That's high percentage basketball, coach. Yes. So yes. I, I, what, what have you seen from Coach Musselman's Razorback teams since he's got here? Well, the, the thing I like about his team is that they take their defense wherever they go. Mm. They play. I mean, he's got them in two. I mean, those guys are on the same page when it comes to defense. You know, uh, they're going to have their up and down nights on the offensive end. They're up and down nights on shooting the three. But defensively, he, he, they're tough. They right. are absolutely. I mean, they don't really give up much. You you know, you you got to earn every basket. And and that to me is a trademark of a good team, well coached. Mm -hmm. That defensive end, that defensive end, uh, yeah, and you move it, you move into the offensive end. But you know, a lot of teams they start on the offensive end, and, and maybe we'll play some defense since we have to. <laughs> right. it's, it's funny, yeah. The game hadn't changed really. Yeah. If you if you can create offense from your defense, that that swarming pressure defense, rebound, run, um, and that's what his teams are. Yeah, they're able to take that anywhere they go, uh, in. They've currently undefeated, close to a top 10 team. Uh, they had some good wins, neutral court. And as, I'm, as I was getting ready for this, what was your scheduling approach? Did you have a philosophy when you were scheduling? Was it, 
we want to play all the home games, work on our chemistry. Did, did you want to schedule challenging games on neutral courts to get ready for certain situations? How did you approach it? You know, uh, Pat, back in the day, you know, 20 game winner was almost an automatic shot at the NCAA tournament, right. winning tournament. And most guys, you know, you look at their schedule, most guys got 18, 19 games at home. Right. I mean, you got to win on the road, two, three, and you, you got over 20 wins. I think what has happened, I, I tried it. I, I, I had a schedule, what I call fire coach schedule. We played Oral Roberts, we played Tulsa, we played OU, we played Oklahoma State. I mean, we played everybody within that area against yeah. them. We played yeah. Illinois and Ohio State. and all, I mean, when you start looking at the teams we played and, and were able to compete and win again, I never, I never worried about the team such as a Jackson State or a Southern that, that, that gets more guys in an opportunity to play. But I wanted to play a good, good solid schedule every year. That way I knew how far we had to go or how far we've come. I knew that because of who we played. Right. You know, you know, you can, uh, with me and my, my grandson's a basketball coach in El Paso. He, he had a 30, 30, 32 to two first quarter game. And he thought their team was really good. And I'm saying, hell, you didn't play <laughs> nobody. Hey, you know, it's, <laughs> it, it's easy to beat somebody 32 to two. It's the what team that's two can't even, can't make a <laughs> don't get carried away about your offense being so per perfect because they couldn't guard nobody and you, and you guys didn't really guard nobody because they, they took shots they just couldn't make one <laughs> so when you but when you schedule a good team and you win that ball game you've learned something whether you mm -hmm. win or lose you've learned something you you don't learn very much from a blowout game there's right. nothing to learn other than than letting them think they are better than what they are and sure. they, may, they may not be that good so i, I like the fact that the, the razorbacks were playing a pretty good schedule played play some neutral courts some away games you know at home and they, they look the same when you start looking the same away or at home mm -hmm. boy that means you've come a long way you, you, you guys are beginning to jail together and the, you got that swagger in your walk and in the play and that's what I see with the Razorbacks at this point. Yeah, they, they had, a, I think, a real team-building win against Cincinnati on a neutral court. Because Cincinnati is a tough team. you got to bring it. And, and they battled, came together. And that was sort of like, okay, we're figuring out our, our identity. And currently, right now, uh, this Saturday, um, they're going to be playing Oklahoma in Tulsa. Which I, you have always said, and you mentioned a little bit of how important it is, and I agree 100%, to play the regional games. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, now Missouri's in, in the league. Right. University of Tulsa. How about, why can't we get Memphis back on the schedule, Coach? You owned Memphis. That was your That's, town. that's the reason. That's the <laughs> reason. That's it. That's it. <laughs> We own Memphis, not only on the floor, I was recruiting against them. You know, you stop and think about this. Todd Day, Ron Urie were, were the two best players coming out. And, and, and the commitment from Penny would yeah. have been three wow. in a row that we got to come to Arkansas. So the goats over there, which was decided that, uh, you know, it's, we, we're, we're, we're interfering with getting players from over there to begin with. And we're winning. We're winning a lot of ball games against him. <laughs> and I, I see his, his point. He's hey, why? Why do we have to battle this guy like that? So let's not play him no more. At right. least the players right. won't think they have to come home to play a game. You know, he can sell that, but he, he won't be able to sell that. I, I I wanted to play those kind of games home and home. We did play Missouri home and home prior to them coming in the Southeast Conference. Right. Played home and home. You know. So we. We had a pretty rounded schedule, and I always thought that if you had, you'd have it like Tobacco Road, Oklahoma, <laughs> Oklahoma State, Oral Roberts, Tulsa, you know, all right around, boy, and, and, and it creates interest in fan, fans, support, and everything. Uh, I see where the university now is playing Little Rock, yeah. Central yeah. Arkansas, uh, which is good. I think right. that's good. Right.
Before we move on, let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet River Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up for Bet Rivers yet, now is the time because they are offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money. With their rush pay instant approval, withdrawing your winnings is safer, it's more secure, and it's more reliable. Now that basketball season is tipping off, get in on the action at betrivers.com today or by downloading the BetRivers iOS app. You must be 21 years or older. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. And while I got you here, let's talk about the Field of 68 Media Network, where college basketball matters most all year round. This is a digital media and podcast network that we've been building over the course of the last year. We have shows hosted by some of your favorite players covering the program that they love the most. AJ Guyton hosts the House of Hoosier. Eric Devendorf covers Syracuse on the scorer's table. Dan Dickow hosts the Gonzaga Bulldog broadcast. We have Florida's Patrick Young and Duke's Andre Dawkins and North Carolina's Shimon Williams and Michigan's Stu Douglas and Illinois' Deion Thomas. The list goes on and on and on. We have more than 30 shows right now. So hit the links below and check them all out. And while you're at it, make sure that you go check out the Field of 12 Media Network, your home for college football. Coach, you mentioned Memphis recruiting. One of the things Coach Musselman has really been able to take advantage of, and this is just from his a lot of his experience, professional coaching, is welcoming transfers and being able to get them chemistry. Now, again, I will say you were a pioneer. You recruit a lot of junior college guys. People forget Corey Beck, Dwight Stewart, the list goes on, Sunday out of bio, Nikki Davis. Isaiah, Isaiah Morris. IBM, right? Yes. IBM, Isaiah, Isaiah Butch Morris. So what um what, what has been your um what was your approach then in the value of getting you know, older players and coach Musselman? I what I see is he sees that same value being able to get older, tougher players. When you got older players, you got a better chance of being successful if they have any basketball IQ. Older players, it's like put up a 21-year-old man against an 18-year-old boy at a high school. <laughs> put him in the boxing gloves and see who's going nine out of ten times going to win the fight because of his experience and his know-how and his toughness. Yeah. Okay. I was a junior college coach, and if they forgot, I spent three years in the junior college level. So I know that there's some players in the junior college level that are way better than the players that came out of high school are playing on, on school teams simply because of the maturity level. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was hoping that I could mix my team with good young freshmen, a good group of junior college players. And when you do it that way, like Musselman has done, he's got players that he don't have to worry about next year because <laughs> they're gone. It's, 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 <laughs> the, only, the only problem is the fans don't don't get all jumpy and jumpy because you had this guy one year. Right. Because that's the style that gives him the opportunity to be successful. Calipari was one and done. You know, that kind of slipping away a little bit more. Yeah. Now it's, I don't know what they call it. You get in a pod and you come oh, out. The portal. <laughs> the portal. Not only that. You play me one night, and the next night you're against me. I'm saying, dang, you were on my team night four last. Now you play on the other. <laughs> What's next? You know? yeah, right. So so the game has changed into that yeah. fact. You know, it's changed. And, and I think Musselman is smart that he's been able to go ahead and, and put in his way of his game should be played by the guys that have the age and maturity level. Mm -hmm. They are so much more mature. Team won a national championship. You know how many red shirts were on that team? Yeah. yeah. About five. You know, Beck was a red shirt. D Dylan was 30 years old. Dylan was almost my age. <laughs> <laughs> you two graduated high school together. I mean, come yeah, on. I used, to, I used to tell him, come sit over here with the old folks. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is funny because you'll hear coaches – say college coaches will say we want to get old and stay old and then you had this influx of the one and done which 
you know as well as I do, it, there's so few one and done players in a given year. I mean, there may be what five to ten legit. So it's really about getting old and staying old. And some is there? Do you think that there is a type of personality for a coach to be able to accept those older players who haven't coached in college before? It's not a blank slate. No. So what what type of personality does that coach have to have? Well, you know, again, you got one year. Yeah. You know, you, you either deal with him or you don't get to play. <laughs> and, and we can't go nowhere. So, so to me, it's nice that you can go out and find a player that will fit what you need done. It, you right. know, it's more like fitting players now to do what I want to be done because I'm only going to have you about for one year. <laughs> That's it. I don't have to put up with you and you don't have to put up with me. <laughs> it's my way or the highway. It, it, it puts them in a different kind of light when you, yeah. when you have guys that there's no more fellas, there's no more free lunches. Right. You know, you, you better bring it or else you're sitting next to me helping me coach. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> It was important to, you talked about 18 and, and I, you, one of the things that when you were sitting in the living room and, and I know you told a lot of parents, I'm going to take your boy and turn him into a man. Right. I'll send you back a man. I'll send you back a man. And, and the value of what I learned from day one, I got on campus talking about being that 18 year old. Actually, I was 19 when I, I turned 19 uh, that May, but getting beat up. By men, the first few weeks of the season, that 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 definitely helped me. And then I knew you were always recruiting, so I didn't want to miss a practice. I always shot as much as I could in after practice, before practice, because I knew you weren't just going to recruit a freshman in a couple of years to replace me. You were on the road recruiting anybody junior call to come in, boom, to make this team better. And I think that's another advantage of, of being willing to accept older players because your current ones know this guy can come in right now right. <laughs> and start to, and to compete for my job. Well, you, you hit it. You hit the nail there. You hit it on the head because I never, I never glorified the players. Like they would ask it, who's the greatest player ever have a, you, that played for you? Well, Everyone that played for me was the greatest. Every game I ever won was the greatest game I ever won. <laughs> you know, it, it wasn't something like, okay, my best player was this guy he played at Tulsa. I says, I, I remember having a kid at Bowie High School that was five foot 11, led the league in rebounding. <laughs> he was averaging like 15 boards a game. And then everybody says, how'd you teach him to do that? I said, I didn't teach him that. Hell, if I'd have taught him, he wouldn't have got two or three rebounds. And that would have been good for his size. But the good Lord has a lot to do with what, what happens to individuals also. I didn't teach you how to shoot, Pat. You just got through explaining it. I took shots after practice, before practice, during practice. And I worked on my, you know, because I knew that's what I was going to have to do in order to keep my position. Right. right. I didn't have to go around and tell you this. And I didn't have to go around. I, I told McDaniel one day, he says, how can I get more playing time? I said, stop people from scoring. That means you got to play defense, and that's something you don't, are not used to. How many kids go to the neighbor's house, young boy, and said, hey, let's go play basketball? Or the next guy walk up to the next same house and said, hey, let's go play defense. <laughs> Nobody. Everybody wants to play ball. Right. So that means shooting. Nobody wants to guard anybody. Now, if you can kind of get, uh, you know, they used to ask me about you, and I says, you know, Pat, without me having to tell him, played the court. He knew how to cut the court in angles. Instead of, he wasn't no circular guy on defense. He could mm -hmm. cut it in half and meet you somewhere. I says, guys who can't run meets people at right places, and they, they, kind of, they catch up with them. Right. I said, right. it's kind of like uh, Martin Luther King said that if you're behind in the race, the only way you can catch up is outrun the guy in front of you. 
That's the only way you can catch up. You got to outrun the guy just in front of you. And then the right. next guy, right. you got to outrun in. And if you keep on, you're going to eventually be in front. So when you talk about basketball, it's how hard you work. And, and, and when you say that muscle memories, that's how hard you work. The harder mm -hmm. you work, the luckier you get, I call it. That's right. You, know, that's right. Said, you, you were lucky, yeah. I'd rather be looking good in a lot of points, a lot of ways. <laughs> because if I keep working, that means I'm going to get luckier. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> absolutely. I mean, that's, that's you know, something that you preach to us. Uh, what Are you familiar with the uh, name, image, and likeness, the NIL situation that's going on right now in college athletics? It's scary. It's scary. So what, what's, your advice, what, what's your advice to the college athletes on how to deal with that? Well, you know, one thing I, I've got to admit that the college athletes, you know, back in my day, we got $15 a month. We called it laundry money. <laughs> so you can, nobody from, I mean, we were so poor from home, you know, nobody got $15. And back then that was probably equivalent to two or $300 today. But we, we got that every Every month, and, and you should see the how what time the lines started. Football, <laughs> basketball, the lines would start like six in the morning. When, <laughs> when you didn't get to pay, you didn't get to pay off till it was nine. So you got three hours to wait to get your get your fifteen dollars, man. And and you know, but with the, all the things that they're able to do now, the, the the BOG grants and all the monies that they can possibly have in their pocket, I'm all for that as much as they can. Yeah. Uh, because there's so many of them that that don't get not one I own penny from their parents at home. Right. Okay. Right. And 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 for you to the school to just use their their likelihood or their numbers and gain big top dollars seems to me that somehow they got to spread that around. If, if if there's a way to spread it around. But when you start that, then you're going to get into another part of the game, which what happens to the women? Right. right. You know, so it, it, it keeps growing. It's going. Uh, I don't I don't know if they'll ever come come with a conclusion of how it's fair. Because I, one way is fair, one way is not so fair, you know, you know, it's, <laughs> and so I, I'm, I'm on the fence of whatever works best. For the young man, I'm on that side. Right. right. I, well, one thing, one part of a coach that I love is the education part of it. The understanding of when you're playing at a, when you're a college athlete anyway, you got a lot of eyeballs on you. And you, it's beneficial to understand your value, how to use it, your, your image, how to Take that seriously. And then the side of the education of in introducing financial intelligence. And, and uh, so all those things I'm hoping is going to be what benefits these 18 to 22 year olds that get that side of the education part of it uh, in athletics. Well, you, you're absolutely right. You know, we just about, you know, a year, a few years back, they accused me of not graduating players from college and and, and I look back now and almost all of them have graduated. In other words, it, it's not, a, it's, to me, college it was not about four years in, in a graduation because right. it took me five and a half years to finish school. I had other things. I had to, to go to work. I had, to, you know, there was things that the average person don't have a clue of what's going on. And so now with this new rules and regulations, I hardly ever hear the word graduation. <laughs> I mean, it's gone. Yes, it's yes, true. It's true. It's I haven't seen the graduation rate percentage. In oh years. man, they had all that all listed and bang bang. It's a bunch of hogwash. Yes. Because yes. you you tell your kids, look, there's a window of opportunity in professional basketball. That window is really really small, but you can graduate when you're 90 years old. You can still graduate. <laughs> so that you got a big window there. And, and, and if I, if I got to help take care of my family and raise it, why would you get angry with me because I'm leaving school early to help my family? Mm -hmm. and, and I didn't get a degree. 
but I, I can go back and get one. Name me someone that, that basically has a chance to get a degree, don't go back and finish. Most of them do. Right, they do. Yeah. So you, you, you don't, don't put a limitation of how many years it takes you to graduate because it's unlimited. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. You know, like I've always used that word, if it is to be, it's up to me. You know, and, and so mm -hmm. I, they asked me the question about how many kids graduate? I said, all those who want to. <laughs> that's, my, that's my answer. All those yeah. who want to graduate will graduate. That's right. And I will help them graduate by having the tutors and, and study hall. And, and I'll run you in the mornings when you don't go to class. You know, I do all that. But if you don't want it, old granny would say, you can take the mule to the water. He don't have to drink. He could be thirsty, but the mule don't have to drink. And so that's what you're doing. You're taking them, you're taking them to where they can drink, but they don't want to. Right, right. right. But if they wanted to, you got you got something special. Coach, um, just a couple more things and I'll let you go. The SEC got seven teams in the top 25. May change over the course of the next poll. Um, but this is going back. I'm not so sure if we've seen as many teams be that good in the same year in the SEC. I don't know if there's a year or something that 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 you can remember where it has been hopefully looking at eight teams in the tournament, maybe nine teams in the tournament. Uh, over the last few years, have you noticed the league becoming that better and, and more teams getting into the tournament? Well, I tell you, I've, I've noticed that. I, I, you know, again, it, it surprised me that there weren't more teams to advance up into the league. I really thought the Southeast Conference changed that the year that Arkansas got into the league. It changed because all, all everybody talked about in, in, in every meeting that I had went to, it was all about Kentucky. It was, it was a Kentucky league. That's right. all it was right. until we came in there and won the championship that year and was, as we were told, we're coming out of the Southwest Conference, you know, pretty much foot, football, no basketball. But yet, the few years before then, coming over there, we were in the final four mm. in Arkansas. And so, so what, I, God, what I'm saying is the, the Southeast Conference seemed to me were improving at that point. And then it's, it took a little snag off. Yeah. Now yeah. it's back of having all those, kind of, all those teams. And they're good. They're pretty good. It should Absolutely. be a good fight. You know, uh, it should it should be a very interesting year for the Southeast Conference and in tournament play. It should be very interesting. Yeah, it's going to be a fun year, Coach. I hope maybe in a month or so as a SEC play, you can join me again after we I see. Will. You. Yeah, for sure. And you know, Coach, talk about things I took right there. That one there, Coach. I got that basketball. Yeah, <laughs> there, I can see it now, yeah. Sticky fingers, man, you know what I'm saying? Sticky fingers, I'll grab whatever I could. This one is not going back up. <laughs> what, what about that cap of yours? Let's see, the cap you got on. Oh, yeah, that's the Hall of Honor one. Oh, man, did, did you, they put you in the Hall of Honor? Yes, sir, imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I've missed something. <laughs> if, if, if you're in there... I hope they can, can they get me in there? Can you help me get in? Oh, man, you know, you already been in there. You're in eight <laughs> halls of fame. You know, <laughs> you're oh, in there. Man. All right. Coach, I, Pat is, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, I appreciate you joining me. Uh, love you and appreciate you. And I uh, can't wait to talk to you soon. Ditto. That means, right, you, know, you know what that means, don't you, partner? Ditto, absolutely. <laughs> right back at you. <laughs> yeah, back at you. That's that new play I used to run. You know, you, you make a basket and you step out of line and throw a touchdown pass to the other end layup. Back at you. Back All at right, you. guys. <laughs> Love it. Thanks, Coach. All righty. All right. We'll talk to you. Mm -hmm.